Welcome back to um, the series of lectures on cultural studies. Um, as you are aware, this, uh, these lectures are being recorded uh, under the aegis of the National Program on Technology Enhanced Learning. Uh, it is a joint venture by the Indian Institutes of Technology and um, uh, the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. Um, we have so far, um, uh, we have so far done, uh, you know, we have so far, sorry, discussed um, uh, several topics uh, and we have already completed module 1, which was more or less introductory by nature. And uh, in the last lecture, we moved into the second module. The second module, you will recall, uh, is a module uh, that deals with the key concepts uh, that inhere in any um, any enterprise um, we undertake to study culture or to do cultural studies. Uh, uh, today's lecture is lecture 2 in module uh, 2 and is entitled identity. Identity is um, a very important concept, a key concept, it is really a key concept in, uh, in cultural studies and as we shall see a uh, while later. It lends itself to so many other key concepts and uh, permeates uh, almost any, any um, uh, you know, any um, aspect of cultural studies. As always, we first do a recap of uh, what was done in uh, the last uh, lecture. And uh, the last lecture, you will recall, was on subjectivity. And uh, before that, uh, before delving into subjectivity, we, we talked about uh, the importance of concepts, we tried to define concepts and uh, if you recall that we defined concepts as units of knowledge or of meaning in which uh, ideas, okay, ideas uh, are given a certain, a certain degree of abstractness and this uh, uh, abstractness uh, we had argued. Is, uh, is required if concepts have to be applied. A certain degree of abstractness, uh, we argued, was uh, important for applicability. We looked at subjectivity as uh, you know the process of being, or the state of being rather. Sorry, the state of being and the process of becoming of a person. Um, unlike uh, you know maybe all the theories that looked at subjectivity as simply a state. Okay? We, we saw that in cultural studies, it is understood also and more importantly as a process of becoming and becoming what? Becoming a person. Uh, we also uh, uh, you know, uh, made uh, some subtle dis uh, dis uh, distinctions between you know, words like uh, kindred words like self self and subject, self we refer to if we at all have to make a distinction as a certain interiority and subject as uh, related, uh, related to culture and to society. We also looked at Michel Foucault and uh, 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 some of his uh, uh, precepts on subjectivities, which include things like there are no universal subjectivities. Okay? Subjectivity is an effect of discourse the subject is a discursive formation, so on and so forth. These are some of the formulations in subjectivity on, on subjectivity that we looked at in the last lecture. Uh, we also looked at par, par as generative and productive of subjectivity. This comes from Michel Foucault and the three ways, three disciplinary discourses in uh, through which uh, this happens. And you will recall, we looked very quickly at these, these being the sciences which constitute the subject as an object of inquiry. Okay? So, power and discourse and knowledge as constitutive of subjectivity according to Foucault happens through three disciplinary discourses and among them one is the sciences. The sciences through their taxonomies, through their categories, okay, through their classifications and their, um, uh, and their, their pronouncements constitute the person as a subject, as what? As an object of inquiry. So, the subject, subject becomes an object, something to be studied and category, put into categories, uh, given labels as it were. Then the next one uh, in this whole configuration is what he calls the technologies of the self. Okay. 
The technologies of the self are strategies whereby individuals turn themselves into subject. And you will recall that there is a certain um, uh, you know uh, very desirable complexity in the in Foucault's understanding of subject subjectivity as not a one way process. Okay? So, if the sciences make an object out of a person, okay, we also as persons as subjects have certain technologies of the self, whereby we can fashion ourselves, can self fashion ourselves as subjects. Finally, Foucault says the dividing practices which separate the mad from the sane, the criminal from the law abiding citizen and friends from enemies. So, these are uh, practices which divide which you know so to speak um, construct binaries of sane, insane, friend, enemy, criminal and the law abiding citizen etcetera. Okay. So, these practices also give us our subjectivity. Then uh, we saw that subject position may be understood as a function of discourse and we also looked at two important words from Judith Butler's gender trouble, where she talks about um, you know uh, talks about uh, 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 Simone de Beauvoir's very uh, very seminal um, you know uh, sentence okay one that one is not born but becomes a woman and uh, uh, um, Butler goes on to argue that there is the possibility of intervention and resignification. Okay, the we can intervene since subjectivity is a process of becoming, and it's you know all is never it never ends. We can we can intervene and resignify what it means to be a person, what it means, and we can construct our own subjectivity. Well, today we uh, we are going to talk about identity. You know, there are. Um, several occasions on which you will find that identity is conflated with subjectivity. Uh, identity and subjectivity are often interchanged in a very loose sort of a way. Okay. So, since this module is on key concepts, it is important for us to understand the shades of difference um, you know, among, uh, among topics or between uh, you know, two topics. So, we are going to talk about identity in today's lecture. Now, as I said in the beginning of this lecture, identity is phenomenally important. Uh, so, the topic uh, uh, for today in, uh, in this lecture is identity and um, uh, as I mentioned uh, in the beginning of uh, this lecture, identity is a, uh, you know a very important concept. There are so many key concepts, but identity as far as cultural studies is concerned is an important uh, concept and one of one of the reasons is that it lends itself to an analysis or it lends itself to uh, you know any discourse uh, for instance the discourse of class okay the discourse of ethnicity the discourse of gender race and sexuality okay one can talk about one's class identity or one's uh, you know sexual identity or one's racial uh, ethnic or gender identities. Okay, so it uh, it is an important concept, and well, let's look at um, uh, some of the formulations on identity. Okay, so uh, let's attempt uh, a preliminary discussion or a preliminary uh, uh, understanding of the term identity as a concept in cultural studies. Okay, identity, uh, well, at least vis-a-vis -vis subjectivity. Okay, let us put it this way, identity is seen as a framework. Okay. Identity is seen as a framework uh, for the instantiation or for the you know what, what should we say the articulation of identity and identity is external. Uh, this yes I, I agree this is uh, this is um, pretty preliminary and this is very really in, in the sense that it is almost uh, essentialist to talk there are so many shades of you know uh, meaning as far as identity is concerned, but I believe this is a way uh, this would be a good way to enter at least into understanding of identity and as I said one of the ways to understand identity is to first differentiate with it with another key concept that is of subjectivity and that is something that we had also touched upon in the last lecture. 
So, well identity is therefore, an external framework and we shall see how. Now, again as I said coming to uh, subjectivity and identity, how do we differentiate, how do we draw out the shades of difference between subjectivity and uh, identity. Well, sub if subjectivity is an internal process, okay, uh, identity is external. Subjectivity is I uh, may you know as we had seen in the previous lecture, subjectivity may be defined as what does it mean to be a person. Okay? Uh, from that point of view, identity then would mean how do other people see you. Okay? So, if subjectivity is what you feel, what does it feel like to be a person, identity is how other people see you. So, um, sub continuing in, in the same vein, subjectivity is therefore, how you are constituted as a subject and our experience of ourselves. Okay? So, subjectivity is a constitution of the subject and our experience of ourselves of what it means to be a person. Okay? On the other hand, identity is not only just how we see us, but how others see us. This is an important point here. Okay? Identity entails how others conceive of us and how others try and and so to speak manage us and manage uh, um, what who we are, what we are etcetera right to understand us. So, identity may uh, have uh, you know a, a few other connotations for instance we many people talk about self identity. Okay? So, how do we define self identity? Self identity are verbal conceptions of ourselves. Okay? They are verbal conceptions of ourselves or they are, they are attempts to know ourselves okay? and uh, know ourselves through language. Right? On the other hand, we also have this, uh, uh, this uh, other uh, shade of or meaning of identity which is as we see here in this slide which is social identity. Okay? Let us go back, we were talking about self identity and now we are talking about social identity. Social identity are not is not uh, the verbal conceptions of ourselves as in self identity. Social identity is understood as others, okay? others opinions or views of ourselves. Right? So, identity is, is, is uh, uh, therefore, understood in these two elementary divisions of self identity and the social identity. Now, we come back again to um, a person whose um, you know uh, um, whose formulations on culture and uh, cultural studies and various aspects we have been following in this course and as I said um, uh, Chris Barker's uh, book cultural uh, bo book on, cu on cultural studies is, um, is one of the books that could be easily taken up as a textbook in any course in cultural studies. Now, Barker then, let us look at this, Barker on identity and identification. Barker defines identity as, and this is an important point here, an emotionally, okay, an emotionally charged discursive description of ourselves that is subject to change. There are two, two or there are more than two aspects here. One, is identity and our identification with, uh, with uh, any phenomenon or event x okay, is he says an emotionally child, we are attached to that, we are attached to identity. Okay. Well, we can we go so far uh, to you know we do so many things with our with our identity or in our in our bid to as we say protect our identity, in a bid to articulate our identity, in a bid to uh, you know uh, um, safeguard our community identity etcetera. And that is why he uses the term here emotionally. Okay? It is an emotionally charged discursive description, no, it is not simply an emotional uh, expression. Okay? Identity is not just an emotional expression that you make or that is manifested in uh, just uh, you know in some points of time, it is also a part of this course. So, a emotionally charged what? Emotionally charged it is a description of ourselves, okay? discursive descriptions. Now, the word discursive as you are aware comes from the word discourse. 
Okay. This course you will recall is a way of talking about anything, it is a way of speaking about something, okay, which entails its own terminologies, its own frameworks, its own assumptions etcetera. Okay. So, it is um, identity and identification. Identity is an emotionally charged discursive description of ourselves that is not that is not a given once and for all. Okay. It is a description that is subject to change. Right? Why? Recall it is because identity is as we saw an, ex an external framework. Right? Identity comes from the outside. Okay? So, identity is an emotionally dis uh, charged discursive description of ourselves that is subject to change as society and culture uh, continues to change. Um, I would like to refer to uh, though he is not really a cultural theorist in uh, you know in the strict sense of the term, he is more of a sociologist uh, Anthony Giddens and uh, Giddens here look at uh, this, sli uh, this slide here. Giddens considers identity as what? He considers identity as a project. Okay. So, identity is a project in the sense that it is something that you, uh, you and I and, and society it is something that we, we keep uh, you know you keep uh, working on okay? that is something that keeps changing. So, identity is seen by Anthony Giddens as a project okay? and he says that social identity okay? remember we talked about self identity and social identity. Social identity comprises the following. Right? If you talk about your social identity and if you have to understand how it has been constructed, if you have to understand the term at all, then you have to understand that it comprises among other things of these five aspects. Okay? Now, let us look at them closely. Social identity comprises A, normative rights. Okay? What are the rights that you have as the rules and regulations or norms allow you to have, okay, a society allows you to have. Along with the normative rights comes second the, the, the issue of obligations. If you have normative rights given to you um, that, that give you your sense of identity, which is given to you externally by society, you also uh, be have certain obligations. Then there are certain sanctions. Okay, that are given to you, that are allowed to you by society, right? And finally, there are roles that you that you play, and these roles, okay, these roles are constituted by what? These roles are not arbitrary. These roles are not, uh, you know, there for all time to come, assigned to you for all time uh, to come. These roles are dynamic and these roles are constituted. And I would say these roles are constituted by the, these three points above them. A, the rights that are given to you. B, the obligations that you have to, have to perform in return. And C, the sanctions that are given to you by society. So, the, the roles that you play are are and the define your social identity so to speak. And finally, he says number 5, the markers. Now, what are markers? Markers are certain as uh, you know certain markers are signs, markers are certain signs and symbols okay? that is they, they signify your identity. Okay? If we have a national anthem, if we have a regional anthem that is a marker. If you wear a certain kind of uh, uh, attire, if you, if you, um, uh, you know, hold on to your language, right, as a sign of your identity, in that sense, as a sign of or a symbol of your identity, these are the markers that you carry. These are the markers that you uh, uh, that you use, so to speak, in order to express that social identity which is yours. The important point here to to, uh, to be noted is again this and I cannot say uh, you know be saying too much about this really all uh, you know um, social identity is something that has been constructed it has you know these five points normative rights, obligations, sanctions, roles and markers are you know what we talked about just uh, a couple of minutes ago are 
or they constitute the framework. We call these words framework, external frameworks. These constitute the framework through which identity is expressed even as it is constituted, constituted or constitutive. Okay. Therefore, in cultural studies terminology, in cultural studies understanding, okay, identity is here not you know it is not a thing identity is not a thing but it is a description in language okay so cultural uh, uh, theorists who belong very strictly to the you know, so to speak the language school or the linguistic turn school of theory would go by this would say that identity is nothing but a linguistic expression okay so identity is not a thing but it is a description it's a verbal description the description in language okay and it is plastic what is the meaning of plastic the meaning of plastic as far as we use we use it in uh, the liberal arts and, and the humanities is to be amenable to change okay plastic means to be amenable to change okay we talk about the plasticity of neurons for instance Okay. Then we talk about the plasticity of neurons, we mean the ability or the amenability of uh, neurons to, uh, to change which with learning and experience. Okay. In the same way, identity is also plastic in that it is amenable to change and it is anti essentialist. You will recall we talked about the term essentialism way back in I think the first or second uh, uh, lectures and uh, we understand essentialism as you know uh, uh, as a uh, you know uh, a theory or an approach that looks at something as things as having pure essences okay there's something essential about men man and there's something essential about human nature so the essentialists would uh, would argue that that no matter how things change there's always something that is essential to a certain phenomenon or an event or a subject or a person but this way of looking at identity as plastic, as identity as a description, as identity as fluid, as dynamic is an anti essentialist move okay, in, uh, in sociology and in cultural studies. Right? So, I hope um, by now we have been able to understand uh, understand, uh, the, you know, the, the complexity uh, as far as terms are concerned, we saw a bit of that in subjectivity and we are seeing uh, some of it in now as we talk about um, as we talk about uh, 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 talk about identity as being anti essentialist as not being a given. So, uh, uh, identity is therefore if it has if it is a framework it is therefore a cultural construction okay that is that is the important uh, that is the important point as far as cultural studies is concerned we look at identity as a cultural construction that is external and importantly uh, uh, importantly something uh, that something that is uh, to do with a uh, topic that we i actually um, plan to have as uh, you know one of my uh, uh, one of my key concept lectures okay uh, the topic of representation so giddens again identity entails our ability to sustain a narrative about the self okay so um, it may be an, an an illusion also but identity involves um, a person's ability to look at this word here ability to sustain you know ability to sustain a narrative about the self what is a narrative a narrative is understood as a story okay so a story has a um, normally has a beginning a middle and an end okay so to possess an identity to have a certain sense of continuity of identity or something that uh, you know uh, uh, that uh, uh, even if it has that this has been built or has been constructed nevertheless has threads of uh, continuity has threads of uh, you know uh, um, threads of a certain uh, what should i say a certain as it says here the word coherent a certain coherence okay so these are the terms he uses a coherent biographical and continuous 
Okay? So, identity entails to have an identity entails our ability to sustain, okay, to keep it going, a narrative about the self. And it is a narrative that has to have some meaning, if not an ultimate value for us. And that meaning and meaningfulness is arrived at by our sense of that narrative of the self as being coherent, as biographical coming from ourselves okay, and as being continuous. Therefore, we understand identity as what? Finally, if you have to sum up uh, these points here, the points that we have been talking about, identity is constructed, identity is negotiated and identity is defended. Okay? The fact that identity is constructed is something that we have looked at. Identity is also negotiated. Okay? Do not think that as even as we are doing theory, uh, that we are the cultural theory, the cultural concepts, that we are the people who, who understand the constructedness of uh, you know, the fluidity and the dynamism of, uh, of identity. Uh, it is not so. Okay? To a certain extent, everyone understands that these are, these are identity uh, is an issue that you can negotiate. It is, I would say, I would even hazard saying that this, that subjectivity may not you know, come very readily to all of us as something that can be self-fashioned, something that can be negotiated. Okay, your, uh, I know I am hazarding this, but somehow this is, this is what I would like to submit. Right? But identity, because you are aware that it is a label that is being given to you okay? and it is, uh, it is in that sense uh, you know, um, a very political issue. Okay? You or a group can always, uh, always does have a feeling that one can negotiate one's identity. Okay? And identity is something to be defended. Uh, let me put it this way, if you look at you know uh, collective identities and collective subjectivities, which is more negotiable? It is in the first place difficult, difficult to have a collective subjectivity. Subjectivity as an inward process, subjectivity as a feeling of what it means to be X, what it means to be a person. right? Uh, I am not saying it is impossible, but it is difficult to have a collective subjectivity simply because every person is so unique. Right? The inner workings of one's mind is contingent, uh, um, you know, these workings are contingent upon time, space, and one has to have a clear idea and vision of how the brain, the human brain works that gives us a subjectivity. But identity in this sense, okay, and I am arguing simply from the point of view, you will understand of uh, uh, from the point of view of difference, the difference between um, subjectivity and identity, identity being external and being a framework, right? Uh, being constructed through what? Remember, norms, normative rights, obligations, sanctions, roles, markers are things that we realize uh, and we can negotiate them uh, rather more readily than we do for collective subjectivities. Okay? And the defend, the, we defend identity. Uh, whether individual or collective, we defend these from, uh, you know, uh, from misrepresentation by people, uh, uh, by people or by, by maybe other groups, if you are talking about the individual person by another person. So, we defend and that is why identity and if you look at identity politics is, is uh, you know, uh, it is so complex an issue and yet at the same time it is uh, something that is quite inevitable something that one would in every community would at some point of its historical time would want to to you know um, to engage in identity politics. Most of it comes if you look at one of the terms you saw a while ago and I said that I will talk about it later in, in uh, my lecture on representation. Okay? It is a question of representation or correctly misrepresentation of identities whether individual or community. Now, the, the, the orthodox view, okay, let us look at this uh, here, the orthodox view of again if you understand of self understanding okay, was a view of the self as autonomous and unified. Okay. We uh, uh, previously thought of the self being something that is completely you know, autonomous, it has an agency of its own and that it is always unified. 
some, uh, uh, something that is stable, fixed, something that is given. Okay? The Cartesian uh, thinking sub, uh, substance, I think therefore, I am. This is a, uh, this is what we call, uh, we could call an exemplary way of this older way of looking at the self as autonomous. Okay? Uh, we recall Rene Descartes. Whom I have mentioned, uh, you know, I think in one in the first or second lecture, Rene Descartes' uh, thinking substance, or I think, therefore I am, is one uh, is something that you know Descartes, of course, uh, meant it in several senses. Of you know, you could also translate it as I doubt, therefore, uh, you know, I am. Okay, but the, this phrase, I think, therefore I am, is is, is banded about almost uh, so much by people that it gives you an illusion of I think therefore I am an illusion of autonomy of the self okay an illusion that you are in complete control of yourself therefore identity is essentialist non plural and uh, universalist is the old school of looking at identity okay it was the philosopher david hume who early on talked about the self or the ego as a bundle of sense perceptions. Okay? That is here, this is when it first came about, that is dynamic and changing. So, the self and the or you know the ego is was seen by Hume as uh, a bundle of sense perceptions all right, but these perceptions are dynamic and changing leading uh, you know early on uh, uh, you know showing the way early on to an understanding of identity and subjectivity okay of self self understanding of self identity uh, and finally as a social identity as dynamic and changing okay and in our time it was you know uh, the well known cultural critic stuart hall who went on uh, to give a f you know a full critique of the topic of identity okay and he called this uh, the deconstruction of identity as a, a concept the breaking down of you know older ways of understanding identity as a concept okay the critique uh, that was uh, started by stuart hall um, again like as we saw a while ago was against an understanding of identity as something that is originary unified and integral hall says uh, and and uh, I'm very fond of this uh, this way um, the way in which Hall uh, put this. Okay, um, identity is a temporary and arbitrary closure of meanings. Okay, I, I need you to look at this to even enjoy this. You know, it says identity is a closure. Okay, it's a closure of meaning. It's a closure of you could say understanding ourselves, understanding the construct. Uh, you know, or what, who we are. But it is a temporary and arbitrary, a temporary and arbitrary closure of meanings in the sense, in almost a deconstructive sense. You know, you can never have arrived at a full understanding of this identity. Okay? So, identity, whenever you think you have arrived at a meaning, you have arrived at an understanding of identity, of your identity, of others' identity, okay? it is always temporary, just it is provisional, so to speak. It is provisional. It is provisional, okay, and it is arbitrary. It is arbitrary in the sense that it is not, uh, uh, you know, it is not. I don't. We don't mean arbitrary here as something random, okay, but arbitrary as we understand. So uh, the word, remember, in structuralism, the word arbitrary as not having a definite one-to-one -one correspondence, okay, between an object and the name given to it. In that sense it is temporary, uh, sorry it is arbitrary. So, identity according to Stuart Hall, uh, one of the finest cultural critics uh, is a temporary and arbitrary closure of meanings. Uh, also linked to this way of understanding identity, you know, uh, through critics like Stuart Hall is, a, the, the, is another concept, the concept of articulation. Remember, articulation is a definite term in cultural studies. It does not mean just to articulate things. As in the sciences, you also have in 
in, in the humanities and social sciences, in the liberal arts, terms that come about after, uh, you know, after one engages oneself in a discursive field, right? And articulation is one of the points. Very many many students uh, talk about articulation simply as expressing oneself. Okay, as far as articulation in cultural studies is concerned and its relation to identity is concerned, it is this. I am reading it out. Articulation is the temporary contingent connections or semblance of unity where no necessary connections exist. Let us look, look at it again. Articulation or the expression okay, uh, is a, you know much like what we talked about just a while ago okay, about uh, here about temporary and arbitrary closure of meanings. Articulation any articulation is an event. It is an event in time, it is an event in place and it is temporary contingent, contingent meaning it is contingent upon certain other factors, external factors and uh, they are te articulation is a temporary contingent connection or just a semblance, it is not really a unity, an actual unity, it is a semblance uh, of unity, okay? in the semblance or in the sense almost of very similitude as you understand it in philosophy. Uh, semblance of unity where no necessary connections actually exist, right? So any articulation, remember, has to be seen as one, as uh, a contingent event. And because of this very nature, okay, of articulation, this is the word here. It can be re-articulated, right? It can any articulation can be re-articulated. Just have you, if you've articulated once and for all, you've made the connections. These are always provisional. Right? And they can be re-articulated under different regimes, different regimes of power and knowledge. So, every regime of power, every so to speak regime of discourse, look at the word regime here. Why is the word regime here? It is used almost in the sense of you know reign, if not a military regime. Okay. So, articulation is done, re-articulated under different regimes of power and knowledge. Why and how is it re-articulated? Uh, re Every regime or reign or era or you know epistemolo epistemological uh, uh, phase, if you, if you will, okay, has certain precepts, has certain uh, what uh, you know we call epistemies. Okay, has certain epistemies or units of knowledge that are seen as true. Right? These two are contingent and these keep changing. So, articulation is again re-articulated or re-articulable under different regimes of power and knowledge and they are connotative and very evocative. Okay? So, you, um, I will quickly quote from another person which uh, from, from Simon During. Uh, from his book Cultural Studies, a critical introduction. During has this to say, individuals have a number of different often mutable identities rather than a single fixed identity. Okay? This is the, the same thing that is putting it, but I, I thought this would be, you know, it, say, it says it so aptly. Okay? Uh, have you ever thought that you as an individual has it ever come to, to your mind that if you as an individual or even uh, a community as uh, you know a community with identity that you may have different mutable, mutable changing, okay? changeable, mute, different often mutable identities rather than a single fixed identity. And this spread of identities and the occasions for invention and recombination that it throws up form a ground for political and cultural agency. Okay? The very fact of the mutability of identity, the changeability of identity and the spread of identities, okay, they, they throw up certain, you know, uh, uh, they throw up certain um, occasions, uh, certain, uh, uh, certain historical phases of recombination right? and they form a ground for cultural and political agency. So, every individual or every community may reinvent uh, himself or herself or themselves 
okay, because of this very condition of identity okay, and what is this? The mutability of identity vis a vis a single fixed identity. Okay. So, let us carry on reading. We recognize ourselves in the images of people like us that are communicated to us through the media and elsewhere. Again, I urge you to recall the external framework that we talked about in the beginning of this lecture. Okay. So, how do we identify and how, how do we go, in, go through this identification? Recall uh, Chris Barker again saying that identity identification entails what an emotionally charged discursive description of ourselves. Okay? So, this is how it happens we recognize ourselves in the images of people like us that are communicated to us particularly through the media and elsewhere. Now, these images beckon these images beckon and seduce us look at the terms these images call upon us these images call us. Okay? So, these images look at the terms here beckon and seduce us. Right? Now, the technical word for here is a word called interpolation. Okay? This is the if you have to use a technical word like say articulation in uh, sorry uh, the word here is inter interpolation. Okay? any cultural object, any uh, object that represents something or any media artifact, okay, they interpolate, they talk to us, they call us, they call upon us to pay attention in the sense that look this is what you are, okay, this is what you have to be. Right? These images beckon and seduce us, now here it is given here technically speaking, they interpolate us, they call us. As now look at this one, invite us to accept their versions of who we are okay? and this is a trap that we often fall, uh, fall into because identity is external. Okay? These images for instance a media image or an image in a book or a novel for instance uh, or an, uh, uh, an image or an idea that is given to you by a propagandist pamphlet also. Okay? These images they call us they beckon, beckon to us and they invite us to accept their version this is the point here their version of who we are. Okay? So, very often then if you are not careful our identities are carved by somebody else and they are carved by the images that we consume, they are carved by the stories that we consume. Okay? So, it is not just a media image here it could be also a myth okay? or a legend for instance. Right? These are these are also the so so to speak the images that are there to beckon us and to accept their version of who we are. If you take an example, the importance, uh, you know, the, the not just the importance, the sheer power that the idea of uh, say a mythical figure has, so she, uh, 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 Sita, for instance. Okay, so this image of uh, Sita is is for women something that is you know it is a version of. Uh, who we are and that version interpolates us and tells us that th this is what you have to become. Okay? Recall the enormous hold that mythical uh, ideas and images have on us. Right? Then and ultimately what draws subjects into this process of identification is their desire for wholeness and coherence. Okay? Uh, remember Giddens, what did Giddens say? That identity is you know uh, our attempt to sustain what a narrative about ourselves and what sort of a narrative? A narrative that is biographical, a narrative that is coherent uh, and a narrative that is continuous. Okay? Now, this is echoed here ultimately now look at let us look at this and ultimately what draws subjects into this process of identification is their desire. Okay? We all of us uh, uh, given the fact that the world is chaotic right? that the disorder is a part of our, of, a, of our world that order is perhaps an imposition we make on the world. We have a desire for wholeness, we have a desire for coherence for meaning that we want to hold on to. We do not like uh, you know fragmented things, 
We do not li like to live, most of us do not like to live in fragmentation. However, illusory, we would like to have a sense of coherence, of wholeness, of a personal biography, of a narrative that is continuous and that has and that gives meaning, meaningfulness and value to us. Okay? So, um, this is what draws subjects, what draws subjects, you know, in this case, draws almost in a magnetic sense, right. Uh, you could also say why do we fall, uh, fall for these sort of images and interpolations. Ultimately, what this is it, this happens okay, because deep down each of us has a desire for wholeness, has a desire for coherence, for meaning making. Okay. And why does this desire happen? The, the point here is in the last um, part of the sentence. The desire is driven by a lack of secure grounding in this world. Okay? The lack of grounding uh, is the reason, is the cause for us uh, nurturing a desire okay? to, uh, to a certain identity, to a certain even identification, which is an, as I said an emotionally charged one okay? and we go in for these images that interpolate that is as I say beckon and seduce us. Okay? Therefore, um, let us keep reading here, identities then are not given in terms of what individuals are as a whole, but in terms of more or less arbitrarily selected features that they possess. For the most part, individuals have little power to choose what features will be used to identify them. They are determined socially from the outside. Okay. Um, uh, because now this is one point which I would like to uh, you know uh, end with really here is uh, the the importance of of identity vis-a-vis uh, -vis globalization. Okay, uh, it is held that today in a globalized scenario. The creation of identity that we were talking about a while ago as identity being created uh, externally, okay, identity as created by media images, by myths, uh, uh, by novels, by you know what have you. Uh, in a globalized setup, the argument that has been given by cultural theorists is that identity is here yeah, a creation through the market forces. This is one thing I would like you to keep in mind and if we talk about globalization and when we talk about globalization at some point of time I would come back to this, but suffice it for now to understand that identity is seen as a creation through market forces. Okay? Um, this is one we need to be absolutely you know careful about right? to see that it is a market that creates and sustains our identity and interpolates it are market uh, forces and and uh, um, artifacts that you know uh, that interpolate and seduce us. Okay? Because of this there is a counter, there is a counter force to this because uh, you know uh, people have realized what we call you can call here the homogenization, the homogenization okay, uh, of this sort of interpolation. Um, there is a revival of traditional identities. Okay? Communities now want to have, want to again uh, you know reassert their own identities and they use the markers for these identities. They set out to negotiate and defend their identities because of the, the identity creation through market forces. Okay? So, identity politics does, does uh, give uh, uh, rise to coalition and shared values and markers and language. Okay? And this is seen as enabling and a redescription and a resignification. Through there are some mar there are markers like anthems I said before, shared symbolic representations like anthems, dress, food habits, and myths. Um, fine, let's go on to uh, quickly to the discussion. And uh, if we are asked this question, distinguish between subjectivity and identity, we would say that subjectivity is constitute is is our way of constituting being constituted as a subject and our more importantly our experience of ourselves and identity is not just how we see ourselves, it, it is uh, also how others and more importantly how others see us. How does Stuart Hall define identity? Stuart Hall defines identity as a temporary and arbitrary closure of meanings. 
How does Chris Barker define identity? Barker defines identity and identification together as an emotionally charged discursive description of ourselves that is subject to change. What is the orthodox view of identity? The orthodox view of identity is one that is essentialist, non-plural and universalist and sees identity as a given. How has identity been affected by globalization? Identity has been affected by globalization A in the creation in of identity through market forces and a certain homogenization as I mentioned a while ago and uh, uh, as a counter force to it we see the revival of traditional identities as a counter to the homogenizing forces. So, um, well we have come uh, to the end of um, uh, end of uh, 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 this lecture on identity and um, um, I would like to say uh, that this is just the beginning we are sort of just uh, you know scratching the surface of, of this key term identity and uh, uh, it is important however to understand these elementary you know this this first takes on identity if we are to articulate ourselves if we are to write uh, you know papers if we are to write to talk about if at all in any in any in intelligent manner on identity and uh, this is what I wanted to bring uh, to you and I hope uh, in some of the lectures later on uh, this uh, the term would come up and uh, in an attempt to show the applicability of identity as a key term at least I hope I can bring in this in uh, for the time being uh, I think this uh, should suffice and just just a few just the few key uh, points and differences that I made and the, the understandings through Anthony Giddon through Chris Barker, Stuart Hall, Simon During stay with these and uh, in, for Asad we ponder on this and to internalize these concepts ok. Thank you so much.